off with the colors They kinda tell me what I'm thinking I fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason why we stay Hi folks, today we are going to do a little um, get ready with me as I chat with you about being two week postpartum. Why do I have the water bottle? Oh, there it goes. I need the water bottle that works. So let me spray my hair really quick. Um, and we're gonna, I'm just gonna get ready and chat with you about everything that has been involved with my breast reduction and surgery. We are exactly two weeks out from having my surgery. So we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get ready and we're gonna talk about all the things from the beginning to today and all the things in between. Let's go. All right, I washed my hair last night in the sink with Jason after I shower with Jason's help. All right, let's, I can't do that. I can't lift my arms still. Okay, so how am I doing today? And then we'll do a, like an overview of like the basic recovery process that I have gone through for the past two weeks. And then we're gonna talk about all the things that I got ahead of time for my recovery process and whether I would recommend still using them. Others who are gonna go through this same type of surgery. I'm trying to find a ponytail. Chelsea is in the shower right now. So I'm hoping when she gets out, she can put my ponytails in at the end. But I'm also gonna try and do it myself. And try and have them be really low and close to my ear back here so that I can do it myself. So I have to get ready today because I have a busy day, but it takes me a long time to get ready and then I have to rest. So I'm preparing myself, which is where I'm at two weeks postpartum. I try, if I have to, I, I'm a mom, I have to go out every day. I am, and I'm also not the type of personality to stay home unless I absolutely have to. I have to pick Ashley up from her cheer practice today, her cheer camp and I have a bunch of errands to run with her, including a doctor's appointment. So it's like I have to go, so I'm gonna get ready. So I, two weeks out, the things that are still are an issue with me are that I still have an incision that is an open wound. It's on this side, it's on the down incision, and I took a photo of it yesterday and sent it to my surgeon's nurse. She called me back and she had looked at it and she said, yep, that's perfectly normal, um, and it's just not something that I knew about, which is why I wanna talk about it with you guys. Healing in that area specifically, when you think about there's an incision from the underside of the breast, and then there's an incision coming up and an incision going around. Why they call it the keyhole. If you imagine that intersection point of all of those incisions, um, there's a lot of pressure at those points. Sorry, there's a car alarm. I hope that's not mine. I hope that's not my car. I'm gonna try and break into my car. We'll see if it turns off here. Um, there's a lot of pressure at that incision point, and so if it does break open, which they say, now that I've talked to the nurse about it, it's like 50% of the time. That kind of pops open um, just because there's so much pressure there. The doctors do the best that they can to make that incision stay closed, but it is just kind of happenstance that it pops open. It is small. It did grow larger since my appointment, since it did pop open. Oh, someone turned off their car alarm. But that's also normal, but it will heal. I'm about to go and look at it this morning. I didn't look at it before Jason left, so I will have to do that. God's change myself, which is fine because I can access it. It's literally right here in front of me. I have hair all over my neck. So, um, aside from that, it's a little tender, a little sensitive, but honestly, all of my incisions are very tender and very sensitive. I've seen people um, put um, pads, like actual like period pads, underneath um, their bra along that line of incision to protect the incision, to protect the incision mark. I might do that. I might do that, I'm not gonna lie. Um, the bra band is right on the incision. You know, there's not much I can do about the front incisions, except I will say, wearing, I had a bra, they were all, they're all the same size that I have gotten, except I've ordered two in a smaller size that I'm gonna try today. And the reason why I wanna try the smaller size when I'm out and about is because when I put, one of the bras that I got had like the, like the pad foaming thing that can go into it. And I wore that on Sunday and, and I went to church and I was out and about and stuff while I wore that. And they just felt more comfortable kind of being tucked in a little bit more, but I can't do more compression than that. And so I'm kind of hoping wearing a smaller bra but without that insert pad, um, will make me feel better today because I do have a long day today that I have to be out and about. Doctor's appointments, I have to find Ashley new shoes um, for cheer. She has a cheer camp this week and then she starts a whole new squad 
next week and it's full practices, two hours a day. So she has to have new shoes. So I'm gonna try that new bra today. So that's a little bit different than I than I didn't know and didn't expect. So you do want compression to kind of make them be held up and be, you know, supported. But at the same time, it can't be too compression-y, if that makes sense. All right, so in terms of how I'm feeling, I am on my very last day of my very last pain medication. So I I took the, one of them, I think it's the nerve pain. There's Chelsea. Nope, hang on one second. Oh, she must not be dressed. <laughs> she shut my window, my door. Um, I have not taken Tylenol since 12 p.m. last night, like since midnight. I did not take it at 6 a.m. and it is now 9.30 a.m. I have not taken it, partially because I knew um, we are two weeks out. I wanted to kind of test and see if I am needing the pain medication anymore or if it is just the sensitivity with the incisions, with not the incisions, scar, because this, is, aside from the one little spot, these incisions are closed. They're technically like, you know, they are closed. So I don't know that like pain medication is necessarily gonna help the sensitivity of the tissue itself. We shall see. I'm gonna, I'm not willing to like not take medication if I'm in pain, but I do wanna see if I don't need to take it. So, so I'm done taking pain meds. I probably could have stopped earlier. Um, I did take um, my pain meds yesterday, all of them, and then forgot to eat something. And I think I got a really bad stomach cramp that, I don't know, freaked me out. I hated it. I didn't, I have never felt that kind of pain before. I think it was because I took the medication without eating something with it. But on, ironically, that was the last dose of that pill <laughs> that I had. And so it worked out fine that I didn't take it again. Not that I wouldn't have taken it just because I got a stomach ache. I should have just eaten it a little bite with it, but I didn't. Okay, so, I mean, that's my recovery is I rest in the mornings. I had Jason take Ashley to her camp this morning. I rested this morning. If I have somewhere I need to go, I go and do it and I come home and I rest again. I sit on my on my couch and I edit or watch TV or I, if I'm actually tired. Hi, Jill. Do you need that brush? Yeah, you want some lotion? Yeah. yeah. I have more of these in the closet if you want one for your room. You just wanna use it for now? Yeah. Okay, and so if I'm really, really tired, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about my recovery. If I'm really, really tired, I will climb back into bed. Um, if I'm gonna get into bed, I'm likely needing a full body relaxation, like my whole body is tired. I'm not necessarily needing a nap, um, but my whole body is exhausted from having to hold the tension away from my chest pain, if that makes sense. It is, Chelsea said, my body is, it's just I'm having to hold my core, hold my back, hold my shoulders, hold my neck. And driving around. And driving around and, and protecting my chest. It was kind of funny because yesterday I don't I don't hold back at home or in the car and in the car the other day you can't me me back up here I literally was going like this when I'm driving I'm, I'm I'm trying to protect and not make them move so I literally was grasping not grasping I just had my hand over my chest putting a little bit of pressure and I pulled up next to a truck and this guy in the truck was like I mean all right if you want to hold your chest <laughs> driving and I looked at him like yeah that's what I'm doing you have a problem with it uh, that's your problem not that's not my problem <laughs> um, I just have to protect it and then it's exhausting protecting it when I'm out and about. As soon as I'm home, as soon as I'm in bed or on a couch, it li literally relieves all that pressure and I don't need to do that anymore. Okay, so that's where I'm at right now. How do I feel about the entire process? 100%, totally doable. Some of the things that were unexpected were my back pain, laying on the operating table. I did not expect to have that kind of a back pain. It's not necessarily like the doctor was like, oh, I wish you had told me about, you know, the fact that you have endometriosis because my sister doesn't have that. And she said her back hurts after surgeries as well. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. I wasn't expecting to not feel pain in my chest. Um, I wasn't expecting the nerve block to actually work for three days, which was fantastic. I wasn't expecting to not take oxycodone. Fantastic. If you need to take it, go ahead and take it. I'm getting nauseous. Pause. All right, the nauseousness is not anything from the surgery. The nauseousness is my medications. Happens about once a day. Probably need to go down and get something to eat. I'm not used to eating in the mornings, still, two weeks later, but I will because I don't wanna get that same stomach cramp from the medication. I think I'm on my last time. I just don't want that stomach cramp today. Or maybe that pill is the one I took yesterday that I ran out of. I forget, but I'm feeling 
Like I just need to go down and eat something. Do I regret having the surgery given all the things that I've gone through? Absolutely no. No, I don't regret it at all. I love my size. I love knowing that weight is literally gone. I don't know exactly how much um, was taken off. They actually kept the tissue that they removed um, for probably four or five days. I don't know how they store it, but they kept it um, and asked me at my first post-op if I wanted to have them send it to the lab and have it tested for cancer or for any other anomaly. And I opted, um, one, he wasn't positive whether my insurance would cover that. The surgery was covered by me full cost. Um, but if, I, if in, the, in this case, I could have had the tissue sent and, and check, see if my insurance would cover um, having them check the tissue or whatnot through a lab. I chose not to have them do so because I literally had just done a mammogram probably two or three Week, two weeks before the surgery and they found absolutely nothing during the mammogram and it was it was a good mammogram so I didn't feel a need to have that tissue tested because it had literally just been looked at and they didn't find anything um, necessary to follow up with another appointment to look at so I don't know exactly I wish I had Jason's like I wish they had you know marked it in your file how much the tissue weighed I'm kind of betting it was a half a pound to a pound because of what my scale is showing me you know I mean like when I came home I wasn't necessarily worried about what the scale was saying um, and I really haven't I've checked it um, every day and documented it just to document this journey that I'm on but I'm consistently like starting out at a lower weight I mean weight was removed so <laughs> it has to weigh something let's see I will go for a another four week well it'll eventually be a six week post-op but I go so I go in about four weeks and then I will go for a three month post-op and I will likely go for a six month post-op appointment. Um, at the next appointment, there is a chance that we will discuss a tissue that is right here in my cleavage. One of the things that he talked about before surgery was one of the in intersecting lines. And he said that for whatever reason, it's only usually on one side, one chest side or the other. Um, just the way he needs to fold the skin and stitch it together creates an external fold line with the skin. And he's like, I try so hard to not have it do that. And then the scar tissue, when it you know heals and, and whatnot, builds up and it creates a little skin tag. It creates a little bump and he's like I don't like that and he's like I think you're more of a modest person and and you maybe won't ever wear any clothing or even swimsuits where that will show I know it's there and I think you know it's there and I do I can feel it and I can see what he's talking about that will probably bother me just knowing it's there and so he said at one of the next post-op appointments he will actually go in and fix that in in the appointment like it'll just do, he'll just do local anesthetic and he will repair that actual skin fold is what he calls it, I think. Um, other than that, he will just ke keep checking the progress, keep checking the incisions, keep checking the scar tissue, keep checking whether I like the results, checking if things are even. I am still swollen, so my sizes are different sizes. So we'll see, you know, but, but you keep going. It, it's not just a one and done um, with this surgery, and, or at least with my surgery he keeps following up with me and making sure that I'm healing the entire way through and I'm not getting any infections or the incisions aren't perfectly sewn together correctly or whatever. So I'm very hopeful that like this process um, is going to be continually followed up on, which is very helpful. So what product or things that I buy or have here at the house that I would highly recommend people doing? I'm being real with you. I am going through this um, and emptying it out because I am feeling like I'm done using it. Um, but this little um, caddy that I got from Target, you don't have to get this one. It just happened to work really, really good because it was good and sturdy. That was my biggest thing. But I do highly recommend recommend a caddy or a basket of some sort. Um, it does help help to have a handle on it so you can move it back and forth because you don't want to lift heavy things or you can't hold it next to your body. This caddy was a lifesaver and I like that it was sturdy because I keep it in my bed or I used to keep it in my bed so that I had access to my medications, my food, um, all the things that I had in it um, right by my side because even it would seem like I could reach it if it was sitting right here. I literally can't reach 
anything that's currently on my um, dresser right here still. Like I still have to ask Jason, hey, can you bring me my little power pack and set it next to me while I charge my phone um, in bed? And then I literally will just toss it when I'm done with it. I literally toss it from bed and it usually lands here. But these were tossed into my bed as well last night. Caddy, get the caddy. You're gonna need it. Have it packed with food. I had extra allergy medication. Um, I actually want to test my size. Um, I'm gonna do that right now to see what my size is. Had a Sharpie just in case. My, my licorice spilled. Um, and then a large um, thing of Tylenol. <laughs> This is just our regular family size. Um, this is the only medication I'm left taking and I have put my regular medications back on my dresser because I can just sit on the side of my bed, take those at night or in the morning. I no longer need to be like laying in bed all day. So this caddy, 100%. Another thing that I highly recommend, obviously I have a YouTube channel and I'm working on my computer every day, but some people may not have the luxury of being able to take, you know, two or three weeks off work and they need to work remotely or they just want to be able to access a computer or they just need to have a really easy desk or table close to their couch or bed. I highly recommend this. I will put links to things um, if they are from online, this is from Amazon. Highly recommend this. I'm actually gonna continue using this because it is quite nice to have. I like can charge my phone from this little table um, section right here, and then I can have my computer on top of it. But also I uh, eat meals on here. I set my plate here and I eat my meals and I watch my TV. So this little table was like 40 bucks on Amazon and I got it intentionally for this recovery, but now I'm gonna keep it and use it going forward. So I highly recommend some kind of a table. You could also do a stool. This actually was quite handy as well. I thought I would get rid of that stool as soon as I had this one, but both of them are handy. I actually might get another one of these so that I have one here as I'm like working or doing things and another one here that looks nicer than a old used um, kitchen stool. Next up, um, we're just gonna keep it real. We don't make my bed these days. Um, you have to have a lot of pillows. Like there's no way around that for this surgery. You have to have a lot of pillows. I'm gonna show you how many pillows it actually takes to make this happen. I have a wedge pillow behind here. I have two blankets that prop up the wedge pillow. Another pillow that helps prop up and make sure that the wedge pillow doesn't fall to the side. Then I have a regular pillow, a regular pillow, and a used Band-Aid, that's gross. Then I do, Let's see if we can see here. I have a pillow on the side over here as long, along with a squishmallow pillow. Then I have two pillows here for my knees. I thought that after the back pain went away, I wouldn't need the pillows under my knees, but when you have to sleep sitting up, which I continually have to keep sleeping up for weeks, like I, the doctor hasn't told me when I can stop. <laughs> so I am in this position for a while. When you have to sit up when you sleep, it's almost necessary to have pillows underneath your knees. It feels better. It's more comfortable. You can relax a little bit more if you can put your knees up, but then we're not done. I still need another pillow to tuck me in on this side. And that's why I call it my little cocoon. <laughs> literally my little cocoon but because we were able to take the basket off the table last night I did not need to wake up during the night to take medications take a drink have food all that kind of jazz we welcomed Jason back to the bed last night and I think he he slept comfortably so he had a little sliver I told him that he could actually like move this stuff and shove it into me more because I was really just using this to give myself some more room but this can actually like I, I can give him plenty of room on his side of the bed um, but he did sleep here last night and he only got one pillow. <laughs> he usually has like two or three pillows, but I literally have taken every pillow possible to be able to prop myself up. So go and get some from Target or Walmart. If you are having this surgery, you do need to have like a ton of pillows, but they don't need to be expensive. Just get the $4 ones from Walmart or Target. Now here in the bathroom, a lot of people recommended getting like a, uh, what do you call it? Like a sponge stick, you know, like a little scrubber brush. You can wash yourself, wash your leg because you can't bend over in the shower. I don't recommend that. Let me just show you an easier way to do that. Yeah, it's shower stool. You just have to suck it up. You just have to do it because it's so much easier. I'm like a little grandma and I put my stool into my shower, but the advantage is when I sit down on my stool, 
I have plenty of area that I can now access. I can clean my legs, I can clean other parts of my body where I'm not actually bending over. I can cross my leg where I can wash them. I can shave my legs. I put my legs up on a little ledge inside my shower and that way I'm not even bending over to shave my legs. I'm literally staying fully upright and I'm just standing here shaving my legs or sitting here, sitting, shaving my legs. I also recommend this because the doctors will tell you do not let hot, hot water land on your chest. You do not want to have that. Whether the incisions are um, open, exposed, whether the um, steri strips are on, you don't want hot, hot water on your chest. You don't want excess blood supply coming to your chest as it's trying to recover, which is why you don't bend over. You don't lift your arms. You don't want excess blood supply coming to the, you know, the injured area. So sitting on a stool in the shower um, allows the, the water to hit your back and then drip down and give you the warmth of being in a shower, but the direct impact of the hot water is not hitting your chest. Then when you're like having someone wash your hair, if you're doing it in the shower, then you let that soap from the shampoo wash down your body and you don't actually have to scrub and wash your chest area because you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to put any soap on the chest area, but you just let the soap from your body from washing it um, just rinse over everything. And then I would lean back and I let clean water wash over the front of me. Sometimes when I'm done showering, I quickly stand up, do a little 360, make sure I'm all rinsed off. Again, turn the heat down a little bit. You don't want to put a lot of pressure with the hot water. Um, but I do highly recommend getting a stool. We also have upcoming surgeries for my daughter and I want to have that shower stool for the future. So highly recommend the shower stool. Seems kind of silly, but it actually was very, very handy. I'm gonna continue using it because I'm still healing. All right, next thing that I didn't know I would need, but I did is gauze. So we have, this is our third and fourth box of gauze. Um, whether you have an open incision or not, you do need to have some gauze on hand um, for after surgery um, for a variety of reasons. Um, also you need to have some Neosporin and some kind of tape to put the gauze on. The next thing that I didn't know we needed, but we ended up needing to buy was this Tegaderm. We were given four of these from the doctor but ended up needing more than that. This is a protective film that goes over um, open wounds and I use this for my drain site when I wanted to take a shower. So I would take off the gauze and then I would put this over the little hole where the drain used to be. This is when the drains were taken out and then I could shower and then I would take this off and put the gauze back on. So I highly recommend having the Tegaderm on hand. I don't think you're going to need band-aids um, but I do know that you're going to need gauze. This is a little bit of a bigger pad. You can get the smaller ones. So I highly recommend having that on hand so you don't have to go to the store. Last thing I'll tell you to get um, are these uh, Fruit of the Loom Surgical Bras. If you type that in on Amazon, literally will come up with this exact same thing. This is exactly what my surgeon buys. This is what he put me in um, right after surgery. And it is, I have now have six, seven of these. <laughs> And I actually cycle through them almost daily. This is the smallest pair that I have just bought. I have the gray one on right now. I just put it on for the first time. But get whatever size the doctor puts you in to begin with and then get extra pairs of them so that you can constantly keep them clean. I do have a little bit of um, pus that comes out on, from my incision that's open. So I change my bra every single day. I wash it every single time I wear it. Um, that's why I need to have a lot of them. Um, and I will be wearing these for months. I will not be in a current normal good bra for months. And that's this bra that I'm currently wearing is the smallest bra I have ever worn in my adult life. This is the smallest I've ever been and the most tucked in I have ever been. Fantastic. The swelling goes down, so that's why you decrease the, the size of the bra eventually. I It only took me a week to be able to go down a size and then I waited a couple days just because this incision opened up and I wanted to make sure I wasn't putting excess pressure on that incision site. So today is the first day that I'm wearing this smaller bra. The doctor even thinks that I might be able to go down another size because I still have swelling inside. Ironically, 
promptly, this is not the side that is infected. <laughs> We're not infected, like slit open, but this one is a bigger size. So he, he said that I might be able to go down to another size eventually. I think that's kind of it. I also, so this is, this video is for people who are potentially thinking about having this surgery or they're in the recovery themselves and they're like, oh, what, did I, what am I missing? Because I felt that way and I still feel that way. I'm like, what am I missing? What, what could I use that would make this process a little bit better? Um, even in the midst of this video, I have changed out the gauze on this incision and I took another pad and I stuck it on the lower portion of my incision mark um, for more comfort against my bra. So you live and you learn. Um, I just want to you, let you guys all know, let me go sit down because I can't hold the camera. We're, we're just still at that phase where everything makes me tired. We're also at the phase in life where we don't worry about the bed being made or the fact that there's garbage on my floor that I can't pick up or that there's a huge mess over there. I'm, I have to be there because I can't pick things up off the floor unless I can grab it with my feet. <laughs> so I just, so this video is for people who are thinking about doing the surgery, but it's also for my followers, for you guys to know that I'm okay. I'm doing well. I'm recovering well. I'm feeling good, but I also know my limitations. And today I told Jason, I am going to be busy from 1.30 p.m. until probably 6.30 p.m. today. Um, and I will probably take you along on that day. So you'll see why I'm going to be so busy um, and you'll come along with me. But part of that was I need to rest in the morning if I'm going to be able to do all those other things that I have to do. If at some point in that time frame I need my kids, my Abby or my Kaylee to help me drive, I will. But there's, I think there's only one section of my day where I have to go get Ashley, take her to the store and then come home. And then the rest of my day is walking somewhere. You'll see. Um, so it's not necessarily that I'm doing a ton of driving. So don't worry about that. I know I'm supposed to limit my driving or not drive at all. Because of that, I told Jason, I have to rest and relax at home until 1.30 p.m. Literally, you guys, I don't know when I started this process, but it's probably been about an hour. <laughs> I need to go slow, I need to rest, I need to relax until I have to do things. And so he had to go to work a little bit late today, later than he would normally have gotten to work. Um, and he took Ashley to her chair practice because her practice is in another city. <laughs> And I was like, I'm not, I'm, I can't get up at eight o'clock today and, and drive her there. I just can't do it. And he's like, then I do it and that's fine. So he is trying to help out where he can. If he couldn't have done it, I probably would have put up convinced maybe Kaylee to do it. No, she had to work. She's already at work this morning and Abby's not legal. So I would have had to get up. So I'm very grateful that Jason has been supportive of me having this surgery, supportive of my recovery, supportive of all the household chores. <laughs> While I don't love that he always, almost always tends to do the kids chores for them if they're not done. If I'm around, he's like, mom's gonna make you do your chores. <laughs> He doesn't like to see the dishes undone just as much as I don't, and so he tends to do them himself, but he's the type of man to like step up and, and do the dishes, and he's doing the laundry, and it's not to my standard, but I can't care about that. I just can't, because I literally can't do it. I can't do it, and I can't do it for another couple weeks, so I have to just support him doing it and support the girls doing their own laundry in their own way, and everyone is. Everyone's pitching in. Um, let me show you my cute little outfit for the day. And I think we're gonna end it because this is gonna be a long video. I'm gonna get a little hair tie. You haven't ever seen me wear pink shorts, have ya? These are kind of fun. So I've got a little tank top on. It's gonna be something like 80 something degrees today. So I wanted to do the tank top thing again. It's just easier to, to put them on and it's gonna be hot. It itches, you guys. That's another thing, the incision lines itch. <laughs> This one particularly, I don't know why. If you wanna see the rest of my day, follow along tomorrow and you'll find out what I'm doing for the rest of the day. But thank you for supporting me and Jason and our girls on my journey to get this taken care of. If you have any questions, I really will answer any question. If it's TMI for you to ask the question on, in a comment below, go find me on Instagram and DM me because I will talk about this till kingdom come. I have shown my aunt my actual boobs. <laughs> My mom has passed away, but I literally sent a picture to my aunt because she is so invested in this surgery for myself, but also potentially for herself in the future. Cause she's like, this is a possibility. Even my aunt who is in her sixties understands we should take care of ourselves. I should probably save up and have this done. So I will answer any questions. I will not send you any photos. I, that will never happen for anyone ever again, but I will answer any of your questions if you have any, um, but also to those who are just here to follow me and support 
support me on this journey, thank you. Because I hear you, I see you, and you are supporting me, but you're also defending me. And I see you, and I love you, and thank you for being my friend and being there for me and for Jason and for the girls. We really, really appreciate you. Um, it means the world to us. So thank you, and see you guys next time.